Adapting history is kind of amazing. Sometimes it cooperates with the dramatist and sometimes it does not. Um, time is very challenging. Chronology is very challenging. Generally, our rule of thumb has been to be faithful to who the characters were and what the history was. But sometimes the chronology has to be altered because otherwise you have events in a sequence where they simply would not be dramatizable. I'll give you a couple of examples of this. In All the Way, uh, the deaths of the three civil rights workers, which is a key plot point in All the Way, occurs in June uh, 1964. The first act of All the Way ends with the passage of the 1964 Civil Rights Bill in July of 1964. If we had included the deaths of the three civil rights workers in a chronological area, it would have meant that the second act of that play would have been, oh, I don't know, an hour and 45 minutes long. In other words, there's, we desperately wanted to include the story of the Civil Rights Movement in Freedom Summer, but we realized we could not include that in the first act, which had to do with the passage of the Civil Rights Bill. So we moved those events into the second act as if they were following the passage of the Civil Rights Bill. Now, I don't think that meaningfully distorts history or distorts LBJ's struggle or distorts Martin Luther King's struggle or distorts the period. But chronologically, you know, this is a, a liberty that was taken. Um, at other times, history uh, cooperates incredibly. I'll give you an example from the Great Society. LBJ announced all the Great Society bills in January of 1965, 104 bills. Okay, this is enormous onslaught, not seen actually in the history of the American Republic since the New Deal. That's the only other example of that kind of launch of legislation. At the same time, exact same time, you have the escalation of the war in Vietnam due to a series of crises that LBJ had to respond to. At the very same time, you have Martin Luther King's campaign in Selma, Alabama for voting rights, which turned into an enormously violent, on the part of the uh, Alabama authorities, uh, suppression of that movement, but ultimately resulted in the triumphant march to Montgomery, which was one of the seminal events to getting the Voting Rights Act passed. The fact that all those events were all occurring in a one-month period, February 1965, allowed for dramatically for a, a, an atmosphere and spirit of crisis and a portrayal of LBJ as a character in that period that was simply an, an amazing opportunity. And one of the aspects of of that onslaught of stuff on LBJ is that on one level he's doing great things. He's passing Medicare. He's helping intervene in Selma. On another level, he's secretly escalating the war in Vietnam and not telling anybody. So there's both symphony, sympathy for him in that period that you can feel, and at the same time, a sort of appalling sense that for political reasons, He's making decisions about Vietnam and concealing them. So in that sense, you get an example where history really absolutely gives you this delicious kind of crisis-filled atmosphere and area of scenes right on a, on a plate. Uh, in great society, in other ways, it doesn't co uh, cooperate quite as much. An example of this would be simply the length of time. 1965, January through March 1968. This is three years. Okay, a play, almost always you want to be under three hours. A, a particularly challenging situation was 
it didn't break down the way all the way did in two clear acts build up uh, a passage of the Civil Rights Bill in Act 1, his attempt to get reelected in Act 2. Those are two very clear kind of through lines, and it's a one-year period, so you can focus. Here you have three years and much more complexity, great society, domestic bills, the civil rights struggles that are going on both in Selma, Alabama, and then eventually in the North, because that was King's main movement after... 1965 was going into Chicago and the North to try and integrate the North, uh, plus the escalation of the Vietnam War. How do you balance all those? How do you deal with those time periods? The eventual solution was to break the play into three acts. This is somewhat unconventional structure. Generally, two intermissions makes a play longer, so you don't want to do that. At the same time, the material itself called out for certain focuses at certain points chronologically in this term. So, for instance, the first part mainly called out to, to be dealing with the passage of the Voting Rights Act, which changed the South forever, and the struggle with Governor Wallace of Alabama and Ellen Case, you know, uh, uh, campaign in Selma for voting rights, and the whole focus of the first act kind of had to be on that. The second act seemed to want to really shape itself around King's attempt to move the movement north. And one of the great ironies of uh, the history of the civil rights movement in America is it did not fail in the south. It failed in the north. And although people in the North were largely supportive of the civil rights campaign in the Southern United States, and this is particularly because in the Southern United States, segregation was so overt. In the North, it was much more covert and much more subtle. And the tensions there, particularly in the cities, were far harder to confront. Uh, in a much more direct way. As a result, the second act seemed to be about the attempt by King to try and move that campaign and the pushback, the backlash that resulted in that. Now, all throughout these first two acts, underneath the surface, Vietnam is escalating. What happens in the third act is you finally see the cost of Vietnam come home. And it comes home in two very intense ways. One is purely in terms of money, in terms of money for social programs. In other words, what you see him doing with those 104 bills, it, Medicare, education, war on poverty, in the first act, starts to be completely undercut because of the amount that has to be spent on the war in Vietnam. And this was not something he foresaw really coming. So the third act becomes about the cost of the war coming home. It also becomes about the breakup of the Democratic Party. What will become Reagan Democrats, blue-collar ethnic voters in Chicago or the major cities of America, because of the civil rights movement, start to become polarized. As a result, there's tremendous tension in the Democratic Party over the issue of race. Um, the war in Vietnam also starts to split the Democratic Party on the right and the left. A significant portion of the Democratic Party supports the war and supports the policies but the much more liberal wing of the party starts to split off. So what Johnson, who had been a master at assembling this coalition to pass all this legislation and to pass civil rights bills, sees over the war and over ultimately civil rights movement, the breakup of the Democratic Party and kind of the result you have today which in his day was an overwhelming majority for the Democratic Party, and now you see this very partisan, almost even split between the Democratic and the Republican Party. So a lot of this, what the 
great society is about is about the political world that has happened today as a result of these pivotal years, uh, 1965 to 68. And you see where the high water mark of progressive change kind of hits a wall and kind of falls back. Um, that became what the historical focus of the plays were and uh, how Robert wanted to deal with this. Um, and the structure followed uh, by necessity the events in history needed to flesh out that particular narrative.